Hello, my Omnibus F4 Pro flight controller board arrived a few days ago, so I've been playing around with this and I set up Arduplane on it, as I did for the OpenPilot CC3D Revo Mini board recently, and they're very, very similar, in fact, almost exactly the same, really. So the experience that I had with that one, although it was a bit tricky perhaps in some spots, um, put me in good stead to get this one done relatively easily. I uh, got a little bit stuck, but um, that was sort of my own fault for try trying to change the ports around to where they were not supposed to be used by it. If I had have just used the defaults, it would have been a hell of a lot easier. So um, I'm just actually going with the defaults now. But as you can see, this is pretty small. It's not as small as the CC3D, but it is still nice and compact and very, very easy to put together um, and very convenient. You get the current sensor and voltage sensor and stuff on there. Um, and I'm really, really liking it. And it's cheap, really cheap. Uh, I'll just show you what the board costs. Well, this is what I paid for it, I think. Something like that. So, yeah, $22. Of course, you will need a GPS and um, receiver and all that other stuff. But I'm going to use one of these GPSs that I use. This is the same one I had on my Revo Mini. And that's about $10 or $11. And the compass I'm going to use is one of these, which is. Um, just a sort of a breakout board. I think I got this on Banggood, but looks like they're not um, stocking them anymore. But I'll just show you the price of that because it's almost nothing really. So we're looking at a total of about $32 or so of parts here, presuming you already have a receiver to use with it. Uh, and there's a buzzer on there too. So um, yeah, really convenient, lots of features. Not all features are there yet, but it's cheap and it's compact and it's easy to set up. It's just, just really great in every way. So I'll just go over the features that are actually available on this because not everything is. Uh, you get, as I mentioned, current sensor, voltage sensor. Uh, you get receiver connection, obviously, and there's power. There's 5 volt power coming out of just this one middle pin on, <clears throat> on the rail there. The other pins here are for servos and ESC control, and there's no power on those, so you'll have to connect an ESC or something up there to power your servos on these other four pins, which have a common rail in the middle there. Um, and then over here we have one UART port here, and then there's a ground in 5 volts, and then there's the I2C uh, SDA and SCL connections there, so that's how I'm running my compass on I2C and GPS on that UART. And that will be serial 3 uh, in the protocol, in the settings on Arduplane. And if you just leave everything as it is when you install the firmware, you won't have to mess with it. So that's serial 3. Um, there's another UART over here. This will be serial 1. And I don't have anything on here, but I'll be using that for telemetry a bit later. And that will be serial 1. And also, if you just use this as serial 1, you won't have to mess with it. Uh, you also have a buzzer. This is just one of those 5 volt uh, so called continuous buzzers and it works quite nice. And then over here we have just a connection to power from your battery. So you've got ground on that pad, um, positive there. And then I think this one here labeled Moto or MOT something there. Uh, that will be where you put your ESC or if you're using it for a multi-rotor there, all of your ESCs will have to come off of that one to make sure that the current's going through here so that it can be measured. Um, now on the bottom we have an SD card, but that is not running at the moment, unless I've really missed something in the documentation or the, from what I've gathered and chatting in the forums and such, that's not ready, but um, it is working on other F405 boards for Arduplane, like the Minipix is running, the SD card's running. But this one it's just uh, hasn't been gotten around to getting it um, implemented yet. Uh, and there's also an OSD on here which is in the same state. So these pins for the OSD over here, I'm just sort of glossing over this because I assume that a lot of people are fairly familiar with these boards already and these are the ones that a lot of people are using for beta flight and clean flight and so on. Um, these three pins up here are for video in and video out facilities and if your OSD was actually running you'd have uh, you know your text overlaid on your video at the moment all it does is just pass your video in and straight back out again um, but hopefully in the future that um, will not be too far away and we'll be able to use uh, OSD on this as well uh, because I know the Night Ghost build is actually um, supporting or 
they have implemented OSD display on that build on this board already for Arduplane. So can't be too far away. Um, so yeah, a good deal of features in a pretty small and very cheap package. So I don't see, I haven't obviously put it on a plane or anything yet, but I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work in the same way as the OpenPilot Revo Mini did, which works pretty well. Now about the procedure for setting this up, I have actually covered it on one of my previous videos, but since it's so short, I'll just quickly go over it again. You first need to install a bootloader onto here, and you do that by holding down this button here, which is a boot button. So I said it was convenient, didn't I? <laughs> more convenient than the Revo Mini for, for sure, just holding that button is much more convenient. So you hold that down while you plug the USB cable in to power it up, and that will put the device, the board, into DFU mode. And from that point, you'll need to get this bin file which is right here and it's labeled Revo 405 but this is the one that you use for the Omnibus F4 Pro as well and this is uh, fairly easy to do on Linux uh, on Ubuntu is how I did it and this is the, the total command lines that I needed to do to get this done uh, so you use this utility called DFU util and uh, I ran this from inside the Pilot source code that I checked out from GitHub. <clears throat> GitHub. So you would go to here and you can clone or download that from there. Or you could download a zip to get it and then unzip it. So when you're in the right place you should find this um, accessible from the current working directory. Um, and then you, I think you unplug the USB and then plug it in again. Uh, and then you should be able to do these commands from the same place. Um, and on Mac I think it would be something similar on Windows I don't really know what the hell you would do on Windows but on Linux it's drop dead simple so that's all you need to do and after that point you should be able to power cycle it and connect to the board using Mission Planner oh before I forget let me say a big thank you to SH83 who helped me out quite a lot in the Gitter chat room uh, when I got stuck with a few things when I changed the settings that I didn't need to change so yeah, once you get connected to Mission Planner, then you basically just go ahead with the setup for your plane, like set up Elevons to be on whatever server you have, and just do everything as normal for a regular PixHawk setup. One other thing I did do, which I'm not actually sure if it was necessary, because I did this while I was sort of still a little bit confused about what the right thing to do was, but there is a mention on one of the forum posts that you need to remove one of these resistors, so I don't know how... It, well, we're going to be able to see this, but um, just in that top corner, right under the tip of the tweezers there, there's two resistors right up on the top. And you might be able to see that one of them I have removed. It's the one on the right. And I thought that you needed to do that in order to get SBUS working on on that output there. Oh, input, actually, that is, isn't it? So what I did was I just poked it a little bit with my blade like that and it just fell off basically <laughs> barely had to touch it and it just flicked off somewhere so that was quite easy um, but I'm not actually sure if you need to do that so just thought I'd mention that I did it and it's working um, fine uh, let's also have a look at this diagram which is well this is actually a diagram for the Pro V3 uh, and I have the V2, but fortunately they are very similar and most importantly the layout for all these plugs and pins and connectors are, from what I can tell, exactly the same. There are some slight differences, for example those two little resistors that I showed you before are actually in a slightly different place by the looks of it. Um, but yeah, you can use this diagram to check which wires coming out of each one of these plugs are going to be the one that you want to connect up to your compass or your GPS or your telemetry or whatever. Um, and yeah, the SH83 guy, by the way, um, put in quite a bit of work to getting this board mapped out to figure out which is going to be which pins and to get it all up and running. And I think he's tried to stay true to these connections as much as he can, which is quite nice because that means that this diagram is applicable to our new Arduplane firmware as well. But as I said before, just keep in mind that the SD card and the OSD uh, overlay will not be working at the moment. So that's about all I have to show you for now. The weather forecast says it's going to be raining for a week or so, so I won't be able to get it up and flying for a little while. But 
at the first possible chance I will do exactly that but I think just for now just to <laughs> make it do something I'll just power it up by USB and you can hear it sorry I was talking over that maybe you should have heard that so it plays a nice little tune with different pitch notes a little bit more interesting than Betaflight um, you can see that is powered yeah so this one is powered this middle pin here has 5 volts the rest of them don't have anything these are powered from USB um, and obviously the buzzer is powered as well so we've got GS GPS going um, compass is going nothing to see on this one no lights though so it's a bit dull but it is working um, and now I should be able to do this if I have the right port did I get the right port yeah I did um, and we can see from the way that it says no fix rather than no GPS that we do have a GPS if there was no GPS detected it would say no GPS um, and the uh, what is this thing? The artificial horizon will move around. It's very sluggish when you're looking at it through your remote desktop, but uh, that is working. And GPS, I can see just off screen, is working. Uh, and we have a little picture there so that when I move the compass, we'll see the plane picture on the map turning around. And the heading display there uh, is working as well. So everything is looking good. Ah, and voltage, we don't actually have any voltage showing up, but let's see if we can do that. Why is this so small? How do I... Um, it's a bit fiddly to change the size of this, but anyway, so I've got voltage there and current in yellow. And I have... Uh, this is just a two-cell battery here. Make sure I get it the right way around. Yep. Uh, and it's at storage charge, so it's probably about 7.4 volts. 7.6, is it? Oh, well, something like that. Uh, and it's drawing 350 milliamps just to power the GPS, I guess. I don't know. Seems like quite a lot of current, really, doesn't it? But anyway, um, yeah, looks fine. Um, so... I'm not anticipating any problems with this when I get it up and running. I suspect it should just run exactly the same way as the Revo Mini did, which is quite nicely. So anyway, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching. See you next time.